Hey guys, in this video I show you how to use Impact LX Plus with Nectar's DAW integration for Logic Pro X. We'll create music using Logic's internal software instruments and I'll show you how to control the parameters directly from the hardware. All internal and some third-party plugins are pre-mapped so you can take control right away. We'll also look at assigning and controlling third-party plugins. With DAW integration, Impact LX Plus can control Logic's transport functions, smart controls and project navigation. You can even navigate locators and create markers. We also cover the mixer remote control features and I'll show you how to improve your workflow by mixing directly from the hardware. Alright, let's jump right in. So let's create a track from scratch. I'll start with the Logic RetroSynth and see what I come up with. Make sure you have selected Instrument Mode to control your virtual instruments. Open and close your plugin window with Shift and Instrument. When your plugins open, you can easily browse through existing patches by pressing one of the patch buttons. Please note, this only works with Logic's internal AU patch management, not proprietary libraries inside third-party plugins. A handy tip. Save out your favorite patches for third-party plugins as Logic AU patches by selecting Save As from the drop-down patch menu. Let me show you how easy it is to make a sound your own by tweaking it from the hardware. For all pre-mapped plugins, the screen printing on Alex Plus is a guide for the parameter mapping. We have assigned Cut-Off, Resonance, Envelope Mount, LFO, in case of the retro synth, it's the LFO amount. Oscillator tune, oscillator level. This blends between the two oscillators and two oscillator modulation parameters. We have pre mapped them to shape modulation and to control vibrato amount. To avoid parameter jumps, values will only change if you literally pick it up at the currently set value. So if your parameter doesn't react immediately, that is why. Simply move a control until you pass the currently set value. Up and down in the display show you the direction. If you prefer the controls to react instantly, you can change this in Logic's control surface settings. The fader section generally controls ADSR parameters in instrument mode. This is where you shape the envelopes of both the amp and the filter section of your synth. You even have a general volume control for the synth, which is really cool. All included software synths, and also the drum synths, are mapped like this. The assignment is a little different each time, but you will see it is quite intuitive. For the vintage instruments included with Logic, like B3 or Clavinet, the screen mapping of course doesn't correspond, but you still get intuitive pre-mapped control. A really cool thing is the drawbar mode for the organ. Just follow the screen printing above the keys, press shift and drawbar and enter on your keyboard and you'll be able to use the fader section as organ drawbars. Logic's internal B3 clone, it's already mapped so you won't need to do that and can start right away. Drawbar mode is a great feature for a possible life scenario too. If you're programming a drum beat and want to use the pads, first make sure the scenes button is off. We'll cover scenes later. If you want to change a pad assignment, just press Shift and Pad Learn. Now hit the pad you want to change, play the note on the keyboard and repeat the steps to assign additional sounds. Exit Pad Learn mode again with Shift and Pad Learn. Now you can play the assigned sounds on the pads. Now let me show you how to assign our own parameter controls, change existing ones or build individual presets for a third-party plugin. I'll use the Helm synth for this, which is a really cool free polyphonic synth by Matt Title. If you don't want to override an existing mapping or want to add additional parameters, you can access a second parameter page by changing between default and user using the page button. To assign a parameter for control from the hardware, first move the parameter you want to map. Then hold the page button while you move the hardware parameter you want to assign. This opens up Logic's control surface window and activates Logic's learn mode. 
Releasing page confirms the mapping and exits learn automatically. If it was previously assigned like here, you have to confirm that you'd like to reassign it in Logic's controller assignment dialog. Simply press the play button on Impact LX to confirm. Your assignments are automatically stored, so there's no need to do it all over again for every new project, which is pretty smart. In case you mess things up and want to go back where you started, restoring the default page mappings is achieved by activating Learn, moving a control, then deleting its assignment. You can also write your parameter changes into your selected track and create really lively dynamic automations. All you have to do is choose the mode how Logic should handle your controller movement by pushing Shift and Mode. For tracking, there's Latch or Read for playback. Now you are able to perform with the controls throughout your track while playing, even with more than one parameter at the time. Make sure you change the mode back to read to avoid any unwanted automation curves. Now let me show you how to control Logic's transport functions from LX+. The transport panel lets you control play, record and stop, jump back and forth in your arrangement, and with the track left and track right buttons you select the active track or instrument. With shift you switch to the secondary layer of functions such as switching click on and off, jumping to your left locator and undo. You can also set left and right locators, just navigate to the right bar and press shift and set left or set it right. With the loop button you can activate the cycle mode in between your locators. You can also create markers to speed up your project navigation. To do so, activate the marker mode by pressing Scenes. Then press Shift and the pad you want to create a new marker, let's say for the Verse section. The pad lights up orange. If your playhead is at that exact position, it changes to green. Now let's create a second marker, say for the Chorus section. I move through the session with the arrow buttons and create the marker. Now I can easily jump to sections directly using the pads. To delete a marker press shift and double tap the pad, the marker is deleted. If you need more than 8 markers, LX Plus offers 8 banks of 8 markers each. You access a new bank by pressing page and one of the 8 pads. Press Mixer to activate Mixer Mode. When Mixer Mode is selected, the Mixer window in Logic pops up and the faders now control the actual faders in Logic's Mixer section. By default, your currently selected track is always assigned to Fader 9. Select the track you want to change the volume on with the track left and right buttons and move the fader to your desired position. If you are holding down the Master Track button underneath Fader 9, Fader 9 controls master volume. If you want to mix multiple tracks at once, you have 8 faders for simultaneous control. If you have selected a track from 1 to 8, the 8 faders are automatically assigned to your DAW channels 1 to 8. If you select track 9, the controller automatically maps the faders to DAW channels 9 to 16 and so on. You can also press shift and bank left or right to switch the faders and banks of 8 to channel group 9 to 16, 17 to 21 and so on. Channel pan is assigned to the 8 knobs above the transport section. Again in banks of 8, 1 to 8, 9 to 16 and so on. The buttons underneath the faders give you access to track mute and track solo. Press a button to mute track, press again to unmute. Hold fader button 9 while you press a button for track solo. A handy tip for fans of the Logic Smart Controls. In mixer mode you can switch between the mixer window and the smart control inspector by pressing page. With the smart control inspector activated, the 8 parts are now assigned to the 8 knobs shown in your door.
Okay, that's all for now. You'll find more information about using Impact Alex Plus with Logic in the PDF file that came with your download. If you'd like to dig deeper into the hardware features of Impact Alex Plus, please check the user guide. Thanks for watching. We hope this video helps you getting more out of your Impact Alex Plus and Logic. Have fun and keep up creating the music of tomorrow.